Hi everyone. In this video, Apostle Joshua Selman will be teaching us on the five things to provoke divine intervention in our lives. Stay connected to this video production. Feel free to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much and God bless you. God reaches down to men through men. Men that he has granted mercy and grace. Men that he has so lavish with his power and wisdom. So tonight when God says it's a night of divine intervention, these are the things you should expect. That God will reach down over your situation. The meaning of that is you are not the only one who is tired of that situation. God for your sake is also tired of it. And that means there are, there are things that have to change tonight. Have to change tonight. Finishing all your money just on drugs. They pay you your salary. You are owing every pharmacy around. Because you are not able to take care of yourself based on the demands. Let me tell you the truth. Whatever does not leave you tonight is what you permit to remain. Provided you are angry. Angry at that situation. Angry at whatever it is. Lord, what has taken away my glory? Let it be restored tonight. What has reduced me that people use me to warn others and say, may you not go down like this person. You can change that statement. I preached about Ichabod. Man can last. There can be longevity to your impact. You're a man of God connected or you're a man of God here. You, you must cry for over the work God has given you. I will not labor in vain. No. No. Are we together? You are a businessman. You've been working hard from January till now. There's nothing to show for it. Doors will look like they will open and then they will not open. The question is who is behind? Who is closing that door? No door closes on its own. Someone is closing it. Even if it's an invisible hand. Welcome to Start Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 130, The entrance of thy word giveth life. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. I want to give you very quickly the keys that provoke divine intervention. I'm not teaching on them, I just want to give it to you so that you are aware. We'll pick one or two of them that will be engaging tonight. But it's important for you to know. There are five keys that provoke divine intervention. Hopefully I'll have a standard teaching on that and I'll take time to explain all of them one by one. But number one, the first key that provokes divine intervention is heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt prayers. Heartfelt, not careless prayer. Not prayer while you are sleeping. Not prayer that you're just prayer that is heartfelt Psalm 18 and verse 3 Psalm 18 and verse 3 please give it to us I will call upon the Lord he says who is worthy to be praised he says so by that formula shall I be saved from my enemies there is a relationship between salvation in its entirety and calling upon the name of the Lord Give us Psalm 61, please. Psalm 61, we'll read the first four verses. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. Verse 2. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto you. It says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Verse 3. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Final verse. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of your wings. Hear my cry, O Lord. Anybody who can cry tonight like blind Bartimaeus, if you can cry, then you can secure divine intervention. God cannot assume you need him. No. It takes a desperate cry. Crying unto God is a sign of humility. I've taught you here that prayerlessness is pride is proof that you do not need the assistance of God. Thou son of David, have mercy on my family. Have mercy on my finances. The prayer of mercy is one prayer God does not ignore. If it is a genuine prayer from your heart. 
I'm saying this so that when we begin to pray, you understand that you are provoking divine intervention. It is true that God can step in over the affairs of men, but he does not do it arbitrarily. There are rules, there are keys that provoke it. Are you ready for number two? Heartfelt praise. The second key that provokes the divine intervention is heartfelt praise. You still find that in Psalms 18 and verse 3. I will call upon the Lord. Then it says, who is worthy to be praised? Not just worthy to be prayed to, worthy to be praised. In Acts chapter 16, give us from verse 25. 25 and 26. The Bible says at midnight. Remember Paul and Silas? At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. The first formula. Heartfelt prayer. Then they sang praises unto God. Loud enough for the prisoners to hear them. Next verse. Suddenly, there will always be this kind of effect when men know how to pray and men know how to praise suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately not two years later not five years later immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose may that happen for you tonight what is the third key that provokes divine intervention. Are you learning? Obedience. Isaiah 119. Obedience. Please give it to us. Isaiah 119. If ye be willing, koinonia, body of Christ, and obedient, the Bible says ye shall eat the good of the land. I have said it emphatically that no matter how bad any land is, there is good buried there. It is your obedience that commands your portion to come to you. Did you hear what I said? Right now, across Nigeria, there are many cities and many territories where minerals are being discovered, solid minerals now. Those minerals have been buried there for years. Others were discovered in non-commercial quantities but others now are being found in very commercial quantities. Just because it was just discovered does not mean it just appeared. It's always been there. Only God knows how many other minerals scattered across Nigeria, scattered across Africa and many parts of the world. Once upon a time, as rich as Nigeria is in oil deposits, a time came when it was hardly known. And then one day, someone discovered it. Can I tell you, your portion is still lying quietly. Whether or not you will access it, it takes the force of obedience. If ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you are disobedient, the plagues that are in Genesis chapter 28 from verse 13 downwards, all of that plague will follow those who are disobedient. You see it now. Cause shall you be when you go out. Cause shall you be when this happens to you. Cause shall you be when this happens to you. I mean all kinds of causes. Negative atmospheres that follow men. The force of obedience. Give us. The scripture just came to my spirit. Psalm 119. Many of you don't read that scripture because it is too long. Psalm 119. Let's try 153. From verse 153. Yeah. Consider my affliction and deliver me for I do not forget your law. Is that in your Bible? Next verse. The, the stretch of it is to verse 160. But let, let's just finish it. Plead my cause. He's, this whole scripture is showing the man is crying for salvation on account of his honor to the word of God. Deliver me. He says quicken me according to your word uh -huh. salvation is far from the wicked for they seek not your status why is salvation far from them because they seek not your status they don't want to know your word and they are not in interested in obedience next verse since we've gotten there let's just finish it 
great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. He says, quicken me according to your judgments. Uh -huh. Many are my persecutors and my enemies. Yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. I beheld the transgressors and I was grieved because they kept not thy word. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. The final verse. Thy word is true from the beginning and every one of thy righteous judgments endure it forever. Obedience is powerful. It can command breakthroughs and command deliverance and even divine intervention for you. So number one, heartfelt prayer. Number two, heartfelt praise. Number three, obedience. Number four, sacrifice. The fourth provoker of divine intervention is sacrifice. Sacrifice of your time, sacrifice of your resources, sacrifice of your energy, sacrifice. The Bible is full of men and women who literally turn the tides and rewrote things in their lives on account of their sacrifice. Do I talk of Abraham? Do I talk of Solomon? Do I talk of, um, you know, the nation of Israel? Do I talk of even hedonistic kings? Who slew their sons and an indignation rose against Israel. Sacrifice is powerful. Psalm 50 verse 5 says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Finally, the fifth provoker of divine intervention is the prophetic. The prophetic. Every time you are in an atmosphere, our precious people sang about the power of atmospheres. When you are in a prophetic atmosphere, because the Bible says God confirmed the words of his messengers, he performs the counsel. You see that when God sends you, among the many things you enjoy if you are truly sent is divine backing. That means when you speak as touching his name, he will defend you. The atmosphere of the prophetic is very powerful. Son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel 37, only down knowest. He says, prophesy. I prophesied as I was commanded. And the Bible says there was a sound. There was a sound. There was a sound. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, there was a sound. As the lepers found their way to go and give themselves and fall upon their enemies, perhaps they would be preserved. The Bible says the Lord amplified their steps and their enemies heard it was like the sound of chariots and they began to insinuate all kinds of scenarios in their mind. Oh, the king has gathered this nation, this nation to come against us and they ran and left their spoils there. The prophetic is powerful. It says, believe in the Lord thy God, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. I know this has been abused, but make no mistakes about it. The prophetic has a space in the making of men. When God said, I am come down, we never saw him coming down directly, but he sent a prophet. It was that prophet that spoke and confronted Pharaoh alongside the spirits of Egypt until God's people were released. God has sent me for your sake tonight and in the name of Jesus, whatever will not let you go must go for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. God reaches down to men through men. Men that he has granted mercy and grace. Men that he has so lavished with his power and wisdom. So tonight when God says it's a night of divine intervention, these are the things you should expect. That God will reach down over your situation. The meaning of that is you are not the only one who is tired of that situation. God for your sake is also tired of it. And that means there are, there are things that have to change tonight. Have to change tonight. Finishing all your money just on drugs. They pay you your salary. You are owing every pharmacy around. Because you are not able to take care of yourself based on the demands. Let me tell you the truth. Whatever does not leave you tonight is what you permit to remain. Provided you are angry, angry at that situation, angry at whatever it is. Lord, what has taken away my glory? Let it be restored tonight. 
what has reduced me that people use me to warn others and say may you not go down like this person you can change that statement i preached about e cardboard man can last there can be longevity to your impact you're a man of god connected or you're a man of god here you you must cry for over the work god has given you i will not labor in vain no no are we together you are a businessman you've been working hard from january till now there's nothing to show for it doors will look like they will open and then they will not open the question is who is behind who is closing that door no door closes on its own someone is closing it even if it's an invisible hand like i would always say there are many of you who need divine intervention over your career and your life. You are gifted. You are blessed. But the nations cannot hear you. Because every time you attempt to rise, according to Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, there are horns. These are, these are spiritual forces. Verse 19 says, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Judah means your praise. Israel means your promise. And Jerusalem means your peace. These are the horns that have risen. They targeted specific areas. Your praise, your testimony, your covenant, your promise, and your peace. They will not allow the word of God to come to pass. But the Bible says in verse 20, gave perspective to that again. It says the Lord showed me four carpenters. And then verse 21, he said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Watch this. So that no man did lift up his head. That means they tried. What is it about the music ministry that I cannot rise? But these horns have vowed. In your rising is the salvation of many. In your rising will also be your reward. And other people connected to you will eat from your rising. Many of you don't know how wicked Satan is. You think he's conditionally wicked. He's the epitome of wickedness. He will kill anything that must be killed. He does not mind if your children die. If you think Satan will reconsider your case, wake up. I've always marveled at the shamelessness of Satan, how he came and stood before Jesus. Forgot that he was thrown down from heaven and stood confidently before Jesus and made that statement. All the proposals he made, Satan is that shameless. He will afflict you and come back. You will cast him out and he will still come back. Paradventure, you will give me space again. You don't deal with stubborn spirits casually. Satan is everything else but a fool. No, he's not a fool. I can tell you that for sure. He's a stubborn spirit. He will come back. I was driven out of your life in January. Let me come and find out. Are you spiritually healthy enough to still keep me far? He's that determined over your life. We believe you were blessed by the message you just watched. Let us know what stood out to you in the comment section. You can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos. So more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages. We celebrate you and see you in our next video. Thank you.